Hello and welcome to Bite Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We're two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organisations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your College of Entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite size revision, give us a thumbs up and press, and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is on polyarthritis nodosa, uh, or PAN for short, uh, which is under the section of rheumatology. So what is polyarthritis nodosa? Well, it's a type of medium vessel vasculitis. If you would like to refresh your memory and knowledge on different types of vasculitides um, and um, would like an overview of those, uh, we have covered them in one of our lectures that you can find in our uh, rheumatology uh, section um, on YouTube. Um, as for PAN, it causes, um, it's a multisystemic inflammatory condition uh, affecting uh, mainly medium and sometimes the small arteries. As for its epidemiology, it's really a rare condition. Uh, the average um, incidence in the US is about uh, two people per um, one million every year. Uh, there is no difference between genders or racial groups, and the average and, um, age of onset is 40 to 60 years. Signs and symptoms of PAN um, are, as I mentioned, really quite different and as it is a multisystemic disease. So you do get your constitutional symptoms and features such as fever, malay, uh, weight loss. However, uh, some of the most commonly um, organs or a system that get affected through PAN um, is skin um, and you would be um, particularly looking for any palpable purpura or any levito reticularis. Uh, it can affect the peripheral nerves um, and one of the key features would be to try to pick up any potential evidence of mononeuritis multiplex. It can affect the gastrointestinal system and patients with potential diagnosis of PAN could be presenting with abdominal pain and derangements of liver function testing. Uh, it could affect the kidneys um, and frequently it can present as infarcts, especially on imaging. Um, and one of the key features uh, is um, an, a middle-aged gentleman who's presenting with testicular pain. Uh, and it can affect the musculoskeletal symptoms, so it could cause myalgia and arthralgia. As for the investigations that you want, again, trying to remain um, systematic in uh, your approach, especially if you are thinking about this in the context of PACES, you would want to start with bedside investigations, and that would be uh, your blood pressure and urine dip, particularly looking for any evidence of high blood pressure, uh, which would be concerning for a, a and potential case of vasculitis, as well as hematuria, uh, which would be concerning for renal involvement. You would want some basic blood tests, um, and that would be your um, inflammatory markers. Um, you would frequently get raised ESR, CRP, and platelet count. Very importantly, especially in the context of uh, multiple choice questions, um, PAN is associated with hepatitis B, Therefore, doing a hepatitis B screen is uh, crucial in helping you with diagnosis and then later on with treatment of this condition. Also, uh, your frequent rheumatological antibodies such as rheumatoid factor, ANA and ANCA are typically negative in this condition. Once those investigations are done, you ideally would want to get a tissue biopsy of 
any accessible tissue. This could be um, any skin biopsy, biopsy from the um, rectum, any muscle biopsy or any uh, testicular biopsies. And if biopsy is not possible, uh, you would be moving down to the next line of investigation, which would be performing a visceral angiography. And very importantly, it's uh, quite, um, um, although it may seem obvious, uh, however, getting an EMG uh, would also be very important uh, when you're trying to establish a diagnosis of PAN. And that's mostly to uh, look for any features uh, or any potential mimics of the condition. As for his treatment, the mainstay of treatment is corticosteroid. However, some cases may require methotrexate under specialist guidance. Of course, it would be very important to treat the hepatitis B if uh, it is present. Let's do some questions. Which of the following infections is classically associated with PAN? 1. Hepatitis A, 2. Hepatitis B, 3. Hepatitis C, 4 CMV, 5 EBV. And if you recall, uh, we have been mentioning about the classic association between hepatitis B and PAN. Therefore, the correct option in here is number two. Question two. A 60-year-old man present with left-sided testicular pain. On examination, he is found to have levito reticularis on his legs. Blood results confirm an AKI of stage 3, a CRP of 60, an ESR of 20, with negative ANA and ANCA. He proceeds to have an angiogram, uh, which is found to have rosary bead appearance. What is the likely diagnosis? 1. GPA 2. EGPA 3. Kawasaki disease, 4, Pan, 5, Berger's disease. So let's just go through this case. You have got a middle-aged man who's presenting with left-sided testicular pain. In the context of MRCP, left-sided testicular pain, you need to be thinking about a potential of vasculitis, particularly a case of Pan. You move on and you realize that he's got a classic rash on his skin, levido reticularis, which is frequently seen in cases of pan. You, the scenario tells you and confirms an AKI, raised inflammatory markers, and more importantly, negative ANA and ANCA. So it's basically excluding all of your uh, GPA and EGPA causes of vasculitis in here. However, what's giving you a classic textbook definition is the findings on the um, angiogram, which is the rosary bead, which is classically associated with the case of PAN. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bysize MRCP. If you like what you heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button below to make sure that you don't miss out on our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in the future. See you in the next episode.